Welcome to the out of the box tutorial for the DOT product DPI-8S and DPI-8S SR handheld 3D scanning kits. In this session, we'll be walking through all of the components included in your new kit and providing an overview of the software functionality built into the DOT 3D Pro software included with your scanner. Right here at this residential facility, we have a new arrival of a DOT product DPI-8S. This tutorial also applies to the DPI-8S SR, with the only difference between those two models being that the S is the more versatile unit for larger space capture because it has a 2 to 12 foot range, whereas the DPI-8S SR is the shorter range model with a 1 to 6 foot range for capture of equipment, components, and especially tight spaces. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and open up this box, see what's inside, and move forward with the scanning process. Your DPI scanning kit will come in a protective carrying case wrapped in blue bubble tape. First, we're going to pull it out of the box. And next, we'll unwrap the bubble tape. Now here you see on top of your DPI-8S scanning case, you have a Galaxy Tab S2 box. This box is empty as the tablet is already installed into the scanner, but it does have some information on the tablet itself if you want to review that or hang on to this for storage purposes. The scanner itself should always be stored in this protective carrying case that you see here. You want to protect the sensor at all times. It is an individually calibrated device and you want to make sure you protect that calibration. So whenever you're not physically using the scanner, it should always be stored in this case. Now once we open this up, we can have a look at what's inside. So included with your scanner is a printed quick start guide. You also have access to a digital user manual which is available at dotproduct3d.com slash dpi user manual. The quick start guide will get you started, however, uh, in addition to this video you're watching now. We also provide information on InfiPoints DP, which is for surface and cylinder feature extraction and is already pre-installed on your tablet with the option of a free trial uh, easily accessible to you. Here's some information on the PrimeSense 3D sensor built into your device. This is the infrared hardware technology used to capture your 3D scans and also some calibration information that verifies your sensor has been individually calibrated for accuracy at our Houston production facility. So now that we've opened up our protective carrying case, let's take a look at what's inside. On the top left here, we have your charging cable for your tablet. This is just a standard Samsung micro USB charging cable. And we have your connecting cable that connects the tablet to the sensor. You only need one of these, but we provide a couple extras in case you run into any issues. Next, let's bring out the scanner itself. So this is stored face down or tablet side up, sensor side down in your carrying case. And it's a component of two parts on the hardware side. The Samsung tablet itself, which snaps into place via a locking mechanism here. So you wanna make sure that latch is always closed when you have the tablet in place to prevent it from falling out. On the back, you have your infrared 3D sensor itself. And also this sticker here, which indicates whether you're using a DPI-8S or a DPI-8S SR handheld 3D scanner. With this new model, you'll also notice that we've exposed the HD camera of the tablet. And this is accessible from within DOT3D for capturing HD photographs while scanning. To turn on the device, you want to press the top left button and hold it down. So now that the device is fully powered up, let's go ahead and attach one of these OTG connecting cables to our sensor so that we can begin scanning. So this is the cable as you see, and we're gonna connect it like so. Once that's connected, you'll be able to access the sensor for 3D scanning. Before we move into the tablet screen for the 3D capture portion of this presentation, there's one more piece I'd like to show you about the hardware, which is this knob here on the left side of your scanner. You notice you have one on the left, you do not have one on the right. That is an indicator for your fingers when you're taking HD photographs as to whether or not they're gonna be interfering with the photograph from the tablet. So you wanna utilize that while you're scanning. If you're gonna be taking an HD photograph, just slide your fingers down below the line and they will not get in the way of your capture while scanning. Now that we've covered the hardware and the out of the box side of this presentation, let's go ahead and switch to the tablet screen, swipe up and head on into our Dot3D Pro application. And now here we are on the tablet screen of the Samsung Galaxy S2 tablet that powers your Dot Product DPI-8S or SR kit. 
There are a couple different applications pre-installed here on the home screen that we should touch upon. First and foremost is the Dot3D Pro application, which you see on the left of your screen. This is the primary app you'll be utilizing for all of your handheld 3D capture and editing on this DPI-8S tablet. Next, you have InfiPoints DP, which is a partner application from Elysium that comes pre-installed on all of our devices as it is designed specifically for dot product data. What this does is it allows for you to extract basic cylinders and surfaces from your DP point cloud data automatically here on Android. You just have to use the share, send to InfiPoints button from within Dot3D to access InfiPoints DP. On the far right, we also have Phi3D, which is our legacy 3D scanning application. This is basically just installed as a backup as we transition fully to Dot3D Pro moving forward. Also on the bottom left, you have your My Files application. This is the Samsung file management tool that can be utilized for upgrades to your Dot3D software or for moving files around within the device. Also on this screen, you see a wide variety of pre-installed standard Google applications. So next, we're going to move right into Dot3D Pro and go through some of the settings and do a quick live scan to show you how to make the most use out of your device right away. So I'm opening up my Dot3D application and I'm ready to start my first scan. But before I do that, I'm going to take us to the settings tab and walk through a couple of these different buttons and what the functionality will provide to you on your scanner. So starting from the top, we have the 3D sensor button, which does take a couple seconds to appear as it detects the sensor that you have connected to your tablet. I'll tap on that. And you'll want to make sure of two things. It, the 3D sensor for scanning should always be set to open an I2 for your DPI device. And the calibration data should always be loaded with this .cal file. And you want to make sure that that number at the end of the .cal file matches up with the unit number on the other side of your device. You generally should have no need to change this and it should be loaded properly in advance as we see here. You also now have access to the Samsung tablet camera for capture of HD photographs while scanning. If you want to modify the settings for that camera, you can select the tablet camera settings button, which allows you to select the resolution and proportions of the HD images to be captured. You generally do want to choose one of these high resolution settings in the very bottom and you generally want to keep the white balance set to automatic. So I will hit apply and OK. Moving down the line, you also have a help button, which will bring you to a web page for support materials on Dot3D. The about button will tell you which version of Dot3D you're running. It'll allow you to check for updates, although if an update is available and you have an internet connection, you will also see an update button in your main menu bar up top. You can also see the EULA and license information here. The scene size settings button will allow you to modify the maximum scene size you can capture. By default, this is set to 55 million points, which is recommended for the Samsung tablet that you're using. But if you wanted to push it a little further for a specific scene and see how far you could get, this would be an advanced setting that you could check if you wanted to try that. But we will leave that on the default setting of 55 million point maximum scene size. You can provide feedback on the application by touching the feedback button. You can get information on your license, which if you purchased a perpetual, DPI-8S, which most do, you'll see this is a valid license that does not expire. Or if you purchased a three-year license with your DPI-8S, then you would see your expiration date here. So that all looks good to us. Lastly, if you wanted to enable the bounding dimensions feature, this is a new feature for capturing dimensions for logistic purposes and measurement purposes. You can access that here, and you can also change the point size and the unit that you're going to be using while measuring from here. So now let's move into our first scan. So on the home screen here, you see the warm up slash new scan button. We want to go ahead and press that. This will prompt the sensor to connect to the software and you'll see what the sensor is seeing. You'll notice here that it does require a 15 minute warm up before your first scan on any day that you're deploying the device. After that initial 15 minute warm up, there's only a 30 to 40 second warm up between scans. If for whatever reason you ever are seeing significantly longer warm-ups than that between your scans, you can confidently bypass by holding the button on the right. In this case, however, we do want to wait the 15 minutes before our first scan, so we're going to go ahead and skip through that now. Now that the device is warmed up, we're ready to start our scan. But before we do, I want to point out a couple things. On the right side here, you'll see this green circle around our start and stop scanning button. That's an indication of scene fitness or how well the device is tracking. 
So that informs you as you scan to avoid losing tracking and pick a good start and finish point. So you'll see as I get too close, too far away, or to flat areas, it'll go down to zero. But when it sees some good scene geometry, it indicates the device is tracking well with that green circle. You'll also notice that I have an April tag here on the floor. This is an optional target that can be downloaded from dotproduct3d.com slash targets. That's highly recommended because it doesn't even require any additional manual measurement or input whatsoever, but it will improve the accuracy and quality of your data automatically behind the scenes. I typically use about five April tags for your average room size scan, but for this quick demonstration, I even just put one down on the floor and we're gonna utilize that as our start and end point. So I'm gonna press this button on the right to start my scan. And now I'm live. I'm immediately capturing color 3D point cloud data of everything I point my device at. All the green and yellow is real-time feedback on the quality of the points we're collecting. You'll notice that April tag turns red, which shows that it has been recognized in the software. And I want to make sure I turn it red again when I return back to the end of my scan. So we're just going to do a very basic sample scan here of this residential space. The range on this device again is 2 to 12 feet, whereas the DPI SR is a 1 to 6 foot range. So this is definitely the preferred device for scanning rooms and larger spaces, where the DPI 8S SR will let you get a little bit more discrete detail and close proximity scanning on components, objects, and really tight spaces. The green and yellow feedback is very important. It's giving you an idea of the quality of every single point you've captured based on angle, distance, time on target, reflectivity, etc. So that's the primary piece of feedback that you want to keep an eye on while you're scanning. A lot of first-time users will find themselves trying to get an extra close to turn the data dark green. You really shouldn't do that. You want to make sure you're just pointing at it from about the three to six foot range or a little further if necessary. And that will give you some really good resulting data. And just keep an eye on that green as you move through your scene. New functionality in the latest release of Dot3D Pro includes the plane picking function. So if I want to flag this floor as being a level plane, I just press that button on the left and it flags it as a flat surface. You can do the same for these walls. And what's happening behind the scenes in the optimization is utilizing this as in some additional information similar to the April tag and recognizing that those are two parallel walls and I'm going to tie those in nice and tightly during my optimization. Lastly, before we finish this scan, I want to show you the other new feature, which is the HD photo capture here on the Samsung tablet. So let's say I want to get an HD photograph of this door lock here to get some more specific detail. I hold the button on the right, that brings up my HD picture, and I release to take that picture. You always have a preview on the right so you can see if your fingers are getting in the way as well. And I'll take another image of this door here, and we'll be able to have a look at those in the 3D data. So now that I've finished my scan, I want to close my loop always back on the same area that I've started, and as best practice, whenever possible, on an April tag. To finish your scan, you want to press the same button on the right in the middle as you did to start your scan. Now the scene is auto-saving in its unoptimized format very rapidly, and you have an immediate preview of the data that has already been backed up onto the hard drive of your device. As you see, we have a couple cues here on the 3D controls that help inform the user while moving throughout the scene. Double tap to set your center of rotation and move your scene with two fingers very easily. You can also, of course, zoom in and out by pinching. We're gonna go ahead and click don't show again and close out of that now that we know what we're doing. So this is the photo rendering of our data you can toggle at any point between the photo rendering and the point cloud view from the view tab. So you have surface and points. And depending on what you're looking at, personal preference, or what you're trying to see, you're going to want to toggle back and forth between those. Now again, this is our unoptimized data. So before we move forward with this, the next step is always going to be to optimize. This doesn't necessarily have to be done on the tablet in the field. If you have .3D edit back on the PC, you can save time and battery life by doing it there. But in this case, let's just do it very quickly here on the tablet. So the next button here is optimize, and it's automatically checked the two boxes that it's going to utilize the April tags and the planes that I flagged in my scene to assist with that optimization, and we'll hit optimize scene. Even without the planes, even without the April tags, what's happening here is it's improving the overall accuracy and quality of my data by leveling the colors throughout the scan, cleaning up any noise that is recognized in the data, tightening the frame-to-frame -frame alignment based on geometry and targets that you've implemented in your scan, and preparing the data set for further manipulation and export.
In addition to April tags, you also have the option of implementing scale targets or hard targets to reference known distances or known coordinates in your scan. And if you have used any of those workflows, those will also be taken into account before and then during the optimization process. Now that our optimization is finished, you'll notice, you'll notice all the data looks a little bit crisper, brighter, and cleaner. Everything's been cleaned up very, very nicely. And we can go ahead and move forward with our scan that's ready to be edited and exported on and off the tablet. So I'm gonna move through some of the editing and annotation functionality here very quickly. We'll be releasing more and more videos going forward with more detail on each of these functions. So the first thing that I usually do is set a coordinate system to reference my data. This can be any known coordinate that you wanna reference based on a larger model or another scan you're gonna be registering to, or it can just be a simple 000 point to reference your scan and make sure it comes in upright elsewhere. That also assists with measurement as well. So I'm gonna to go to edit coordinates, and that will allow me to set an XYZ system. This is what was auto-detected by the device. You notice the Y axis is going up. We wanna make sure first and foremost that the Z axis is going up. So I'm gonna do set and pick origin to set a new 000 point in my scan. I'll set it to this corner. If I hold, it gives me a zoom window to select exactly the point that I want to be my origin point. Now, if I press the primary button, I can set my Z axis straight up out of the floor by pressing and holding on the floor. And I can set my X axis straight out of the wall by pressing and holding on the wall. If I then want to adjust to make sure my axes are pointing into my scene, I can switch the X and the Y, and now I have a nice coordinate system to reference my data set. So I'll press confirm, okay. Now that I've set my coordinate system, I might wanna crop out some of the extra points in my scan. So I'll go back to that edit tab, and I have two options for cropping. One is a quality filter, which allows me based on some of that green and yellow feedback from earlier to crop out some of the lower quality points at a threshold. So I'm just gonna set a pretty low threshold and take out some of the lower quality points in red by pressing the apply button. In addition to the quality filter, under the edit tab, we also have the cropping option which allows me to select any points in this rectangle to crop out or to keep, depending on which button I select below. Before I do this, it's often helpful to switch to the orthographic view. And then I can go view vantage points top down. Based off the coordinate system that was just set, this makes it very easy for me to select the area of interest straight down. And then I can invert that to crop out everything that's in red. Before I do so though, I can also switch to vantage point front and then very easily crop straight through in this example to take the ceiling off of my scene as well. And then I press the crop button on the bottom right corner to delete all of those extra points that I don't want. And you can switch back and forth between the orthographic and the perspective view at any point in time in that view tab. You can also immediately measure from your data on the tablet in the field. So if I wanna get a measurement from any point to point within my scan, I just tap with my finger and I get those two points that I'm measuring from. Notice that it also gives me my change in X, change in Y, and change in Z. And this is a draggable endpoint, which makes it really easy to select exactly which point you're trying to measure to and from, even on a tablet and a touch screen or with a mouse and keyboard back in Doc 3D Edit. Moving down the line from left to right, we also have annotation functionality, which allows you to flag any particular point, plane, or cylinder in your scan that you want to add notes to. So if I want to flag the doorknob here, I'll, se I'll select that point, tag it as a point, and call it door knob one. Add any detailed information that you want, and save with the exact XYZ location of the annotation. It also even saves the location and viewpoint of when you made that note. So when you share this with somebody else, they're looking at it in Dr. E View or Dr. E Edit, they double tap on that annotation and it brings you to the point in which that note was made. So it's great for taking someone on a walkthrough or showing things in the perspective that present them best. You can also add surface-based annotations. So if I wanna get a surface area of this floor, for example, I'll hold on the floor and select that I want to annotate to a plane. Now this recognizes that plane automatically. I'll do another one for the wall. And either of these will give us a surface area if you tap on the annotation. 
An additional benefit of these surface annotations is the ability to measure from them. So if I go back to my measure tab and I move that measurement, you'll see it's now able to select the floor itself. It gives me the option, do you want to measure from that point or from that plane? I'll say from that plane. And now anywhere I move my measurement throughout my scan, it's pulling them all perpendicularly out of that plane. We also have an exciting new design comparison functionality. We've released several videos on this functionality, which can be found at dotproduct3d.com slash design compare. What this does is allow you to load an OBJ CAD file onto the tablet for in-field comparison and registration of your data to the design model. Before we finish up here, I'll show you a couple more things. You can take strategic screenshots of your annotations, measurements, and data uh, that clears out the menu items can be shared very easily as simple PNG files. I should also mention from our view tab, we can access those high-res frames that were captured earlier. So here you see the image and orientation locations of when I took those HD photographs from the camera of my tablet. If I tap on these images on the right, it'll bring me there in 3D. And if I hold on them, it will bring up the HD photograph, which gives me a lot more high resolution detail from that particular perspective of the object or area of interest. If I go to the other one, it again brings me there in 3D and shows me that detail that I didn't have in my point cloud scan necessarily. When you're satisfied with your data and you want to move forward with it, you want to go back to the file tab and you want to use your standard file management tools to work with the scan. So save is always a best practice. I'm saving this directly into DP format. Our auto save scan, our, our auto saved unoptimized file is always backed up as well. Or if you want to export to a different file format, you can go to file export. And this gives you a wide variety of export options that maximize compatibility with any of the different 3D workflows that you may have. The only, the only format that is not included here on Android is .rcs, but you can directly export from that in .3D Edit on Windows. Now that concludes our out-of-the-box tutorial on .3D Pro on the DPI-8S or DPI-8S-SR. We'll be continuing to release more detailed videos on each of these features uh, in the near future. But if you do have any more immediate questions, please contact support at dotproduct3d.com or visit www.dotproduct3d.com.